Hello, welcome to episode 5, where we are going to look at the five-sided figure of the uh, perfect pentagon. Uh, a typical chemical example of this particular shape would be the cyclopentadienoanion. So you have C5H5 minus 1. This particular molecule has six pi electrons, so it is actually aromatically stabilized. So the CP minus ligand is a very important ligand in both inorganic and organometallic chemistry. If we take two, it's kind of a quick analysis, if we take two of these CP ligands and put a iron atom in between, so kind of get a side view of what this would look like, we have a very, very important molecule, ferrocene. So ferrocene is two cyclopentadienyl anions, rings separated with a iron atom in between. So let's just look at the rings themselves first and see what symmetry operations are present in the uh, perfect pentagon. The first thing, of course, we always want to look for is the high order rotation axis. So we can set up our model to do that. And we'll put that right there. You can use our push pin to represent the axis of the high order rotation axis. Now in this case, we have a very interesting um, high order rotation axis because if we take the pentagon and we rotate by a fifth of a turn, so here we rotate by a fifth of a turn, we see that all the atoms line up. So this is a C5 operation. So this particular molecule has as a high order rotation axis C5. Now if we go in the opposite direction, so let's, here's where we started. Now we go C5 clockwise. This is C5 to the minus one. So we see that the perfect pentagon CP minus ligand has both C5 and C5 to the minus one. Similarly, if we go two one-fifth turns, we actually have C5 squared is a symmetry operation of the group. And if we go in the opposite direction, clockwise by two C5s in a row, we again see that the uh, substituents line up perfectly. It is invariant, so therefore C5 squared, C5 to the minus 2, is a symmetry operation of the group. So there are a number of these uh, rotations that are based upon C5. Those are the only ones that we have in the plane of the molecule. But if we take our molecule apart, we can see that it has a very large number of, let's over this way, of C2s. So if we have along this line here, we rotate by 180 degrees. We see that all the atoms line up perfectly. Uh, this one stays where it was. These two here switch. These two here switch. So that, if we rotate, we see. So we have a C2 there. And in fact, if we go along the lines that are drawn on the molecules, we actually have five C2s. Since we have N C2s that are perpendicular to a CN, that tells us that we have a DNH group here. So because we have... Uh, C5 is a high order rotation axis. We have five C2s. This makes us a D5 uh, group. And more specifically than that, it's D5H because in the plane of the molecule, we also have a horizontal mirror. And the horizontal mirror is perpendicular to the high order rotation axis. That makes the mirror a, a uh, horizontal mirror. So it has sigma H. It has a very large number of vertical mirrors also, which we can see. Um, they're drawn on the model. So if we score and fold along each individual line, we see that the mirror plane goes through the, the middle of one side and also through one of the substituents. So there are five different of these sigma v's, and we can see that they actually are um, a good mirror. If we fold along there, we see that the atoms all line up. They all line up along the edge. And then if we do it with a mirror, we can actually show the mirror plane more dramatically maybe or more in tune with its namesake operation. So by putting the mirror along, uh, put exactly along the line there, we can see it looks like the original molecule. As we hold the mirror plane there, that shows that we have one sigma v that goes along that line. And we can do this repeatedly with each of the possible lines we can use. So there are five different mirror planes that are all uh, perpendicular to the plane of the of the molecule. So there's five of these sigma v's and we can see them. See them so the point group of CP minus ligand 
is D5H. And we'll put this off to the side. So let's look at another substituent combination. Now, with five different possible substituents, there are many, many interesting ways to uh, substitute the molecule. So uh, we're not going to show all of them, just show um, a few of them. Now, this one is actually uh, kind of useful because we have three of one substituent and two of another. And uh, uh, they're, they're in an alternating pattern. So you do notice uh, that as far as mirror planes go, that if we, and we want to fold this this time, we can, but we can use the mirror, we see that if we go along this particular axis here, that we actually have a mirror plane right along there. So it shows us that we have at least one mirror plane uh, perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. Again, because it's a planar molecule, we definitely always have a mirror plane in the plane of the paper. Uh, in the plane of the molecule, so it has at least two mirrors. Then we want to see if we have any uh, C2 axes. So there are none in the plane of the molecule, but if we go along this axis here from pink to center of the side, and we do a C2, we see that the atoms line up with where they were before. Green goes to green, pink goes to pink, pink stays exactly where it was. Again, we can see it again. You can rotate. So this has a C2, but the C2 is in the same plane as the horizontal mirror plane and also all the vertical planes. Uh, so the only mirrors we have for this particular substituent pattern is uh, vertical mirrors. The mirror that's in the plane of the molecule is not a horizontal mirror, it's a vertical mirror in this case because it actually includes the high order rotation axis, the C2. So here we see a much more complicated version of a point group that we've repeatedly encountered, C2V. And uh, as a way of sort of reminding ourselves of that, if we turn the molecule around this way, kind of upside down, we notice that from these particular, we've got green, and then we have pink, and then green, it looks very much like, like water. So if we can imagine the greens are hydrogens and the pink is oxygen, we can kind of begin to recognize the general shape of C2V molecules. So we always have to be careful to make sure that we look for each of the symmetry operations, but it's also very, very helpful uh, when you're beginning to classify the point groups to have a general impression of, oh, that's what that looks like, or a general uh, idea of uh, C2V-ness in your, in your head, that you can use it as a comparison. So for this particular very much shortened episode, because there are uh, fewer substituent patterns that we want to look at, we're just going to look at one more substituted pattern. So here we have four different substituents. We have uh, three pinks, we have a green, and we have an orange. So we have four, uh, three different substituents, but um, arranged differently than we had before. And we'll line it up with another copy of the exact same arrangement here. And we'll see that if we look for a high order rotation axis, we can try that again. Let's see if we can do any of the rotations here. We'll set it up, put our push pin through there. Be careful, you don't hurt yourself with the push pin. So now we try to rotate by C5, and we see that oh, almost everything goes to something different. So this particular molecule has an, no, no C5s. No C5 minus 1, no C5 squares, no C5 to the minus 2s. And, on. and in fact, there are no how the rotation axis is higher than C1 because we take the molecule apart and we go along any particular set of lines. Now, this may look like the most uh, symmetric version. And then we have two pinks at the bottom, one pink at the top. But we notice that if we try to do a C2, we have green turns into orange. And then we have orange turns into green. So we don't have C2 here either. Uh, the only point group, uh, the only symmetry operations that we have, the identity, which we always have, and we have, again, a mirror plane. So because we have a horizontal molecule, uh, we have a planar molecule, we know that we have to have at least one mirror plane. So we have a mirror plane, and we have the identity. So this is the point group CS, where S stands for Spiegel, for the mirror. So the mirror and the identity are the only symmetry operations that we're going to find in this particular molecule. So in the next episode, we are going to talk about the symmetries of hexagons, so six-sided figure. And interestingly enough, going from five sides to six sides, 
makes for a much more rich combination of substituent patterns and a much wider group of subgroups from the hexagon and then from the pentagon. So that's something to look forward to the next episode, which would be episode six. So uh, thank you very much and have a good one.